Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be tearing into the 8HP70 transmission. Uh, we're going to be attempting to take the valve body out of it and take the, uh, I forget what the unit is called inside there, that basically it's the brains of it. Uh, we're going to, well, it's basically the transmission control module, I guess, that's built internally. We're going to take it out and we're going to replace it. Um, well, that's not really the best way to say that. What we're going to do is we're going to take out some of the guts and we're going to solder in something else. So that'll all make sense here, but we're going to be soldering in a little uh, circuit board. Let me show you what it is. Okay, you may have seen this in uh, the earlier videos, but we're going to be soldering in this circuit board right here from Ryutech into uh, the guts of the 8HP70. So first thing we have to do here is I've already got it rolled up on its side, and then I'm going to pull off the, uh, pull off the pan, and then pull the valve body out and then uh, disassemble it a little bit there. I'm going to take you guys along for the ride and show you how that works. Okay, so here's a look at the transmission pan. It's a plastic pan. It's actually got an integrated filter, so whenever you service this transmission, you're supposed to replace the entire pan and filter. This one's only got 30,000 miles on it, and the fluid is extremely clean and nice. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know if I'm going to replace that or not. I'm leaning towards not, even though I probably should. Depends on how much it costs, I guess. I know the fluid's very expensive. Anyway, here's a look inside at the valve body. And I've got to take out a whole bunch of bolts to get this dude out. I don't know if I have to take out every single one of those or not. I'm going to have to check and see. But... Generally speaking, it's just a matter of taking out all the bolts necessary to get this dude out, and then somehow or another we've got to get out uh, this big black plastic piece. That's really what we're after. That has the uh, wiring parts in it that we're trying to modify. So yeah, let me do a little research, figure out what i got to do to take this apart. And uh, here's all your solenoids. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess that makes sense being an eight speed, so... Let's get her out of there. All right, from what I can tell, um, I was looking around and I noticed that some of these are T40s. Like that one's a T40, and these others around it are smaller. So from what I can tell, you just have to take out the T40s and leave these alone. These just hold the valve body together, the halves of the valve body together, but these hold it all to the case. So there's, uh, let's see, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, one there, one there, one there, one down here. Here. so they're uh, around in various spots but I'm gonna pull all those all out and then see what happens after that Okay, so that came out actually easier than I thought it was going to. <clears throat> um, yeah, so that's it. That's the valve body. Okay, so it would appear that the mechatronics unit, which is all this right here that we got to get off, is held on by a few bolts. One was right here. I just took him out. He's right there. And then there's one right here. And then I think there's one hiding right there. And that's all that I can actually see. So I'm going to take all those out from this side and see what gets loose at that point. Okay, success. So all in all, you got to take off uh, five screws out of the bottom, five bolts. And you've got to disconnect this electrical connector from right here. It just comes off. And then these pins here come out with the unit. There's three of those, like locating tabs, I suppose. And then the whole thing just kind of wiggles up and off. And then this is it. So this is the entire mechatronics unit right here. 
this is what we're after. This is the brains of the transmission. And underneath this cover is where our new circuit board is going to end up going. So next up, we're going to try to figure out how to uh, basically cut. I think i got to cut the top of that thing off. And might have to go in from the back. I can't remember. I'm going to have to watch a video and do a little research. But anyway, that's what's next. We're going to cut into this and expose the insides of that. Okay, so according to the Ryotech video, I just need to, uh, first I need to trim off this n little nub right here, and this one right here, and that one and that one. Uh, just grind those down, and then that will allow the black back half of this to separate from, uh, I guess that brown inner half right there. And then that will allow us to access the top of the, uh, the uh, ECU here, and that will be the next step though. Uh, grind those off, separate it, and carry on. Okay, so that was pretty easy to get off. Um, so the next step is, according to the videos I have seen, you're supposed to cut the top of this case off with a something like this, but smaller, like a Dremel, which I don't have. Um, you just cut around the outside and peel the top of this dude off, which I guess seems like one way to do it, but I'm sitting here looking at this like, well, why don't I just grind these things off wouldn't that allow the case top to come off from the case bottom? And I could just take the lid off or... Actually, now that I look at it, no, that's not the case. No, that's not the way it would work. This flange here is the bottom. And this thing here is apparently glued on. So it's not going to come off by doing that. So anyway, it looks like I'm going to have to cut this all the way around with the Dremel, which I don't have. And all I have is this big old thing. I don't have anything smaller, so I'll either make this work or I'll go pick up a Dremel at Harbor Freight or something tomorrow. Alright guys, so I went to our favorite tool store, Harbor Freight, and picked up this little guy because uh, I didn't even own a Dremel tool. Surprisingly, I thought I had one, but I didn't. So anyway, I picked this guy up and some carbon tips or carbon cutters. I've never used those either, so we'll see how well that works on metal. But uh, the idea here is we're just going to go around and uh, trim all the way around here and peel the lid of this guy off. So let's get that done next. Well, this little tool sucks. You can't apply any pressure hardly at all and it just turns itself off. So this thing doesn't seem to have the horsepower to even do this job. So. Feels like this is going to take absolutely forever and maybe never get done. Okay, so I switched to the grinder type disc and that's working way better. But I will say that this thing is a piece of crap and I wouldn't bother buying it. It was $22 a Harbor Freight, but it just has no power. Um, you try to cut in a little bit and it just stops and turns itself off. And you got to turn it back on. You cut and it stops and so on and so forth. So it's got some sort of a protection circuit in it so that when it gets locked up it just turns it powers down um, if you can run it up on high speed it, it works okay but then it seems to overheat when you load it and it shuts down again so anyway this thing sucks but I did manage to get through one side of it you can see the cut line right there um, I did manage to make it all the way through on one side so I just got to do that three more times and we'll have the lid off of here that took me about probably 10 minutes to make that cut so it's going extremely slow but I'll get there um, but anyway, I won't bother filming all the rest of this, um, but that's the idea. Alright, after much time has passed, um, I finally got it off. Got to cut all the way around. So that's that. And this is what's inside these dudes. Just some electronics, 
on a little circuit board and the whole thing's glued down to the bottom here with some really really soft glue silicone type material down here and we're just gonna leave all that stuff down there it's not gonna be used for anything anymore uh, what we're gonna do is go through here and take all these wires and isn't this strange how this thing's built these wires come up out of here and soldered to these strange pins I've never seen a piece of electronics built this way this is very unusual to me to see this literally just wires going down there and they're soldered down to the board and up here I've never yeah it's just strange to me but anyway so I guess the task now is to go through here and uh, bust all these pins off with a razor blade so you just kind of chip them off and scrape these pads down flat and smooth get them all looking like these here more or less and yeah cut all those wires off get rid of them and then we'll solder down the circuit board in in place and the circuit board will get soldered down to each one of those uh, kind of pads right there. I want to call them pins but they're really like solder pads. So that's what that looks like now. Now it's time to do a little more cleanup. So I'm just going all the way around and I'm using my thumb on the back of the blade and just chipping each one off. They come off real easy. They're just soldered on there. So there we go, I've made my way all the way around and broken them all loose. I think probably what I'm gonna do now is take my cutter, my side cutters here and trim them all down real short so that they don't potentially ever cause any problems in the future. And then I'm gonna go around and clean up any of this metal that's hanging around these edges. Make sure it's all cleaned up, make sure no metal can ever chip off and fall down and be a problem. Then I'm going to clean everything really good with alcohol and a toothbrush. Um, get all the surfaces just as clean as I can get it. And then I'm going to make a pass back through with a razor blade and clean up any more solder that's hanging out on top of any of these. And get all these pads ready to accept solder by making sure they're very, very clean. Okay, so here it is all cleaned up. I uh, washed the whole thing down to break clean to get the rest of the trans fluid off of it and wash off all the grit from grinding and cutting. Uh, got it all as clean as I could get it. And then I used uh, some isopropyl alcohol to wash all this area down here and a toothbrush. And basically just got all the grit out of there that I could. And that's about as clean as it can be. And so now it is time to drop in the Ryutech circuit board really nice piece here and it just goes in like this drops right in there fits real nice has just a little bit of wiggle super nice piece and then now the job is going to be just to solder um, across from each one of these that has a rectangular pad to the round pad I'll be using my solder station here this is what I use to do all my solder work <clears throat> in my day job so should work pretty good uh, I solder everything with this tip here pretty much and you can't focus on it but anyway that's what I use to solder and that's how I clean it and uh, yeah let's give it a go Yeah, that's going to solder real nice. Okay, so that went really, really well. All that soldered beautifully, so I'm just going to continue that on across here and then over there. And, uh, yeah, that'll be that. Gonna go ahead and pot this up and I got this potting compound from seems legit they sent it along with the whole kit and they sent this really cool uh, billet machined cover which will cover uh, the circuit board there it is now I'm half tempted to just kind of fill that trough right there with more epoxy and I think I will. Alright guys that's it. 
Um, that's probably the hardest part of the whole job. The scariest part for most people, I'm sure, with all the soldering and everything, but uh, went together real good. If any of you guys end up actually wanting somebody to do this part of the job for you, I do soldering literally every single day. I own a business, um, and I solder every single day on circuit boards. Been doing that for 12 years, so I'm super comfortable with that kind of work. Um, so you could actually send me this and I will do this part of the job for you if you want me to. If so, contact me and we'll make it happen. Um, but now it's time to let this set up and then put all this back on the valve body and put the valve body back in the transmission. Okay, so I've got the valve body all reassembled and the mechatronics are back on, as you can see. And we're going to stick the valve body back in, but this is a really important point here. You won't be able to get the valve body back in because this spring-loaded uh, parking pole falls down when you pull the valve body out and it gets locked into a position. So what you have to do is you have to push down right here, just that much. Hold down on that while you pull down on this and it'll allow the parking pole to line up vertically and then the valve body can be installed. So. That's a tricky point that I had to figure out. Um, so anyway, that's how that's done. And then one other important point that I forgot to point out when I was pulling the valve body out is this uh, tin piece right here, this metal piece, is actually a locking clip that you pull up. This thing slides up, and then what that does is it allows you to pull out the plug from the case, uh, which goes in right here. So this is normally in here, and it's hard to, it's hard to pull the valve body out. Um, because you've got to pull this up to unlock this piece and then pull really firmly and twist and this will come out of the case and then the valve body can come out so when you put the valve body back in you just got to do all that in reverse um, so a couple things to note that won't be intuitive for you are that locking mechanism there and then the parking pole right here has to catch on this uh, thing right here so anyway a couple little tricky things that uh, I wish I'd have known before I started would have saved me a few minutes. So I put them in the video. Now it's just time to put the bolts all in there, torque them down to 10 foot pounds. Uh, one thing I don't know is if there is a torque sequence for all these. I'm sure there is, and I couldn't find one. So I'm probably just going to do an inside to out kind of a circle uh, type pattern and uh, be good to go.